the web is Microsoft's recent offering for cloud-based work and project management, providing simple and powerful work management capabilities and can be used by teams of any size. Depending on the required capabilities, there are two areas available to users. First is the project home that is mainly used for scheduling and task management. In addition to this, a mob driven app is available within Power Apps that provides a fuller and more complete PPM system than that of Project Home. First, we will look at Project Home, where we can see a list of the recent projects that have been opened by the user. To favourite a project, simply hover over and click the star symbol next to the project and it will be added to the favourites bar at the top. Project Home also allows users to view projects that have either been specifically shared with them and also projects that they have created themselves. Projects can also be filtered by using the filter pane on the right hand side by simply clicking in the box and searching for the required project. Once the required project is found, simply hover over the project in the list and click the project name to open the schedule. When the project is open, a list of tasks will appear firstly in a grid view. With supporting information about the task, such as the assigned to resource, the duration of the task, the task start date, and the task dependencies. In addition, several hidden columns are available to be used, such as the percentage complete, the effort, and the finish. Custom columns can also be created depending on the needs of the project. In this example, the custom field deadline will be created. To filter a list of tasks, a filters pane appears at the top right hand corner of the screen with the ability to filter by the finish date, the progress, custom buckets that can be defined against each of the tasks, and also who the task is assigned to. In addition to viewing tasks in a grid view, we can also change to the board view where tasks are changed to cards and can be dragged around into different buckets of information. The first view we can see on screen is the custom bucket view where a set of custom lists of buckets can be defined based on the needs of the project. In this example, I've created the custom buckets for internal, external and both. To move a task, simply click on a card and move it around the board. In addition to the custom buckets grouping, I can also group by who the task is assigned to. In this view, I can simply drag and drop a task to a different user that will then automatically reassign that task to that specific user on the project. In addition to this, I can also group tasks by their progress, where the options available to me are not started, in progress and complete. In addition to this, I can also group by the finish date, where the options available to me will vary depending on the finish dates that are currently set within the project. The third viewing option is to view tasks in a timeline view, where an interactive Gantt will appear on the screen that allows me to make modifications to tasks by simply clicking on the tasks bar and moving the sliders to shorten the start date, the finish date, and I can also determine the dependencies that exist for the specific tasks by clicking on the circle at the end of the tasks bar and dragging it to the required task that has the dependency. In addition to this, I can use the zoom bar to scale the Gantt view so that all of the appropriate tasks appear on the screen. I can use the filters pane, as we've seen before, to filter tasks in this list by specific criteria. I also have the ability to use the go to date function, which moves the Gantt chart along to the specific date to view the tasks within that time period. For each of the views, I also have the ability to click on the I symbol, which will open up the task details pane. This gives me a pop-up pane where I can add information such as task notes and also populate fields that we've looked at previously. I can also, in this view, add specific attachments to the specific task where I have the ability to attach files from my computer from a team's location and also from a specific URL. We will now look at project for the web in a model driven app. 
The URL, unlike Project Home, will vary from each organisation. The example on screen is a custom built app which we'll be looking at how to build in future sessions. Firstly, we can create a homepage dashboard which is a live summary of data which can be custom to specific organisations. In this example, we have summaries such as active project requests, summary of projects by business units and also program health. To view a list of projects that I have access to, I can simply click on the projects navigation on the left hand side. They will take me to a projects table with a summary of all of my projects and I can simply click on the project name to open up the project area. Once I'm in the project area, I'll firstly be shown a summary of the project with custom built fields such as the executive sponsor, the business unit affected and the state of the project. I can also see a summary of schedule information with items such as the finish date of the project and also the earliest start date of my project as well as the effort currently spent within my schedule. I can also define custom business lifecycle stages. I can also define a custom lifecycle for my project and we can see here I have a number of stages that the project has to go through throughout its lifecycle. Currently I'm in my build phase. What we can do with this life cycle is define custom approvals. We can also set fields to be required at certain stages of that life cycle. By simply clicking on the stage, I can see the required fields that are needed to go to the next stage. And I can simply click next stage to take me into the next area of that project life cycle. As well as the summary tab, I also have the business case area which is a custom built tab where I can define a narrative against my project, value that the project provides, and also its strategic contribution where a series of drop downs can be selected. And once that's saved, a prioritization score will be generated. Next, I have created a custom financials tab where I can see a budget against my project, as well as the forecast spend and the actual cost that I've spent so far. In addition to this, I have a summary of my remaining budget and my budget variance, which is a calculated field based on the information here. I've created a second area, which is defining the total benefits given for the project and a calculation of a return on investment score is automatically generated based on these two items. I also have a third area, which I've defined where the funding is available and the source of the funding for the project. Next, we'll move to the resources tab where I can see a summary of all of the resources that have been assigned to tasks within the tasks area of the project. We can also see a summary of the total hours per resource, the effort completed and also the effort remaining. By clicking on the tasks tab, I can see the project schedule that we saw earlier in Project Home embedded within this model driven app with all of the same functionality that we saw earlier in the session. I also have a risks and issues register in which I can define current risks on the project and we can open a risk item to view a risk form which can be customized to meet the specific needs of the organization. We can see in this example, I have a general summary of the risk, a risk assessment, that calculates a risk exposure and also a narrative against a risk such as the description and the mitigation plan. In addition to the risk list, I also have my issues list that can be tailored to the needs of the organisation. Within this issues list, I have a custom issue and we can open up that issue record to see some general information as well as a narrative against what the issue is and the current resolution. We can also define a custom change log where changes can be tracked and managed against the project. By clicking on the change record, I can see a general summary of my change as well as a scheduled plan start and planned finish date and some narrative against what the change is and the benefits that it will provide. Within the system, I've also defined a status log where a summary of the health projects can be added and updated. 
as well as rolling up summaries of active risks, issues and changes. In addition to this, I can define a custom status report. When opening up a status report, I can define information such as the individual that submitted the status and also the narrative around what was completed, planned activities and the additional comments. In addition to this, I've defined a custom milestones table where key project milestones can be identified and captured throughout the project, uh, tracked by the project manager to ensure that they are on track. And finally, I've got a cost profile tab, which allows me to define custom capex and opex costs and define a breakdown of the year and a month by month spend. When opening up a financial record, I can see a summary of the finance cost type, the year that the finance was undertaken, and a breakdown of the cost by month. So as well as project management, the system can also tailor towards program management. Firstly, we will demonstrate this by navigating to the programs area and selecting a program. Once opened, we can define a summary of information about the program, such as start, finish date, and priority. By navigating to the financials pane, we can see a summary of project financial data that has been rolled up from related projects, as well as program financials, such as the overall program budget and the return on investment. By navigating to the program status, we can see a summary of active projects and projects that are on track, at risk and in trouble, as well as defining custom KPIs for our program. Finally, navigating to the projects tab shows a list of current projects that are in flight and related to this program. We can navigate to the resources area to see a summary of resources that exist within the system. By clicking on a resource, I can see more information about my resource and in this view, I can define custom work hours. Once the working hours have been defined, when users get assigned tasks, these working hours will be considered during the scheduling of that task. We can also define a project request list. Here we can see a summary of all the requests that have been raised in the system. By navigating and opening the request, I can view additional information about that request, such as general information, narrative, and a project prioritization. Once the project has been transitioned through, a project can be created from this request. In addition to viewing risks in an individual project, they can also be viewed holistically in a global central risk list. By clicking on the risks on the left-hand side, you're able to view all of the risks that are logged against all of the projects and programs within the system. By clicking on an item in a record, you can see where that risk has come from. This is the same for issues and also changes. When looking at reporting within Project for the Web, we are able to navigate to the reports area and see all of the reports available to us. Reporting in Project for the Web is typically completed within Power BI. And as Project for the Web is based on the Power Platform, we are easily able to pull data from tables within Dataverse and report on them within the Power BI tool. So when we move over to the reports, we can see uh, here in this example, there is an out of the box Microsoft develops report pack. Firstly, we can see on this page, we have a portfolio dashboard summarizing key metrics on the left hand side, as well as various visualizations to group the projects by their type and their governance phase. The benefits of having Power BI integrated is the interactive nature by being able to filter on various drop downs and also interacting with the visuals. We can navigate to a different report page where we can see other information. In this example, we're going to go to the portfolio timeline where we can see a timeline of projects by their start and finish date. 
Moving over into the portfolio costs, we can see a breakdown of costs against each project, as well as a summary on the left hand side of total costs across a filtered set of projects. Next, we move over into the portfolio milestones, where we can see milestones upcoming in the next 30 days across the portfolio, as well as milestones that have been completed in the last 30 days. Next, we'll look at the portfolio risks, where we can see a summary of the risks that have been added into the system, as well as the project that that risk comes from, a link directly to that risk, and as well, summary visuals at the top. A similar report exists for portfolio issues where we can see very similar look and feel and this time it will show the issues within the portfolio. Next we'll go to the resource availability where we can see a summary of the capacity versus demand against each of our resources and a heat map will appear at the bottom of the page showing the remaining hours per resource. We can see in this example Lydia Holloway has actually got minus 25 hours available in the 1st of January, meaning that she is over allocated. However, we can see that Sheena has 160 hours in January available, so we can make decisions around where we move tasks to based on individual user availability. Again, this can be filtered by specific departments, groups, and a custom resource breakdown structure. Moving over into the resource overview, this report will break down resources by their department as well as a summary of that resource, their max units and their calendar. Next we'll look at the resource assignment report where we can see for each resource what their assignments are. We can simply click on the resource on the right and get the breakdown of their total tasks, task start date, finish date and the percentage complete. Next, we'll go into the resource details where we get a breakdown of information about each individual resource. I can filter the resource at the top and that'll give me a summary of that resource, including the total project assignments and work, as well as a demand capacity over time. Next, we'll look at the resource demand forecast report where we can filter by specific resources or departments and get a breakdown of the total demand of work, as well as a prediction of what that demand will look like in the future. Next, we'll go to the project status, where for a given project that is filterable in the top right hand corner, we will get a overall summary of that project, including a summary of the data, including risks, issues, and work on the left hand side, as well as work over time, cost over time, upcoming and completed milestones and links to various areas in that project. And finally, we have a project risk and issue report showing the key risks and issues across the portfolio, as well as a risk matrix. This is one example of many reports that can be created using the data within Project for the Web 2.0.